Okay, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a Wells Gardner D9800. I do not offer services on the 9200, 9400, 9800 because of how notoriously difficult they can be to repair and the 1001 caps that are on the 92, 9400. I have worked on some in the past simply because they fell in my lap and I was able to have a tube and all that stuff, but I don't offer services on these because of how difficult they are to repair. However, a local collector was in dire need of getting some monitors fixed. Uh, he's up in Kansas City actually and he brought me down a couple of K7000s and a G07 and this out of a um, Lost World Jurassic Park and of course it's a light gun game so you can't LCD it and he said pretty much you know help me Obi-Wan Kenobi you're my only hopes <laughs> so I said okay I'll take a look <clears throat> and what well, it, it fired up uh, well I t let me go back when I first turned it on and hooked it up, there was arcing and sparking shooting out of the bottom of the flyback. I'm thinking, okay, well, no hope there because the flyback is bad. But after removing the flyback to look and see what the problem was, I found a solder ball had fallen under there because a cap kit had previously been done by the owner of this. And there was a solder ball that had fallen underneath the flyback and it was causing arcing and sparking. I took it off, found the, 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 uh, found the, solder ball in there, got rid of it, put the flyback back in, and the thing came right to life. Thinking, okay, that's all it was. Well, not really. Uh, I did not expect to be able to fix this, so unfortunately I don't have any images or video of what it was doing before. Well, actually, hold on one second. I, com I completely forgot that I had sent this video to the owner of this, uh, explaining what the problem was, and as you can see here, there you go. That's the problem I was dealing with. It was a, a pretty much all white screen. The right side was all blue and messed up. We you can see the blue up. Oh, it just shut off and then came back back on and it's flickering and it's got intensity of white there in the middle and the top left corner is uh, there's no image up there. I thought this was a yoke problem. If you look at look at this, it looks more like a yoke issue than anything. But uh, it turns out that it was not, uh, as we know for well, as you're about to see, I guess. Um, but yeah, the see it just shut off and came back on and the intensity is flickering and. And if I give it a video signal, it just shuts off completely until I take the video signal out, and then it comes right back on. Uh, there's no on-screen menu, no nothing. It's just, this is what I was dealing with trying to figure this out. Um, yeah, if I give it a video signal, you'll see here that it just, uh, let's see if I can do this here. There it goes. As soon as I plug the video signal in, it shuts off. If I unplug the video signal, it comes well hurry on come on uh, it comes right back on so yeah it uh it whenever it had a video signal it would shut off it has this flickering intensity of of the image it's all gauzed up here it's this is what it looked like and what i was dealing with so yeah now back to the regularly scheduled program and i thought well there's no way i'm going to be able to fix this because i have no experience with these this is the first time I've ever actually worked on a 9800, ever, in 15 years. I've never even seen one until now. Most of all of my experience is on the uh, 9294, and that, that's very limited as it is when it comes to these Wells Gardner tri is what I mean. Uh, so I said, well, okay, I, you know, I'll do my best. Um, and I, I troubleshot and troubleshot and couldn't find anything wrong. I thought IC001 or IC002 might have been a problem. Uh, that wasn't it because those are right here off of the video input line. See, here's your video input. I thought neither one of these could be the problem, so I, I, I uh, shotgunned one of those in there each and didn't fix anything. Then I started looking over the chassis, and I noticed that, uh, let's see, what was it? It's uh, C, f which, which one was it? Oh, it's over here. C310. Uh, C310 right here, this guy right here, that's 35 volt 2200. That's not the original one that was in there, because this is the original one that was in there. And if we look at it, it uh, it's not good. It's bulging out quite a bit. You can actually see it's kind of cracked in there. Um, but this is what was in there, and uh, it's not good. You can see how it's uh, blown from the top. So I thought, okay, maybe the cap was in backwards. Well, it wasn't. So I grabbed another one, and I put another one in there. Powered it on, and I watched it. And I could visually see it start to go... And you can see how it started to bulge as well. It's not flat anymore either. Both of these, you sit down on the flat surface, and they wobble around. So the replacement also started to bubble. 
I thought, okay, well, let's go from there. So if we look at the traces here for C310, I haven't cleaned this up yet because I just got it repaired. I haven't tested it or done anything yet. I say repaired, I haven't tested it yet, but I'm pretty sure that I found the problem. So it's still dirty here, sorry, but C310, if we follow, if I, I took my meter leads and tested across here and I had like 100 ohms across here, I thought, well, that's kind of odd. You shouldn't have any reading really like that across a capacitor. So I follow the trace here, if you, and it goes right here to this D301. So I tested D301 in circuit and it was shorted. It was uh, four ohms across, across here. So I took the diode out of circuit and in circuit it's reading shorted across the legs. I took the diode out of circuit and it reads fine. So the diode's not shorted. So okay, so now you have to go off of what's on the trace. If you follow the trace, it goes to pin two and pin six, it looks like, yeah. Pin two and pin six of IC301. I took IC301 out of circuit and the short was gone. So internally, IC301 is shorted to cross pins 2 and 6. So I put a brand new IC301 in there. After doing that, my short is still gone, and that was it. So um, I kind of went from there. I put a new IC301 in there. Sorry, I'm thinking about other stuff while I'm trying to narrate. Um, I put a new IC301. The dial was good. But also, if we look at what's also attached to the, the other side of this here, is that there's this trace here, uh, it goes from this contact, the positive contact of C310, it goes over here to the diode here, and then it goes to pin 2 of IC301, but it also comes around here and goes to R317. Now, R, uh, R317... Where the hell did it go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's... Here's the IC301 we took out. This is the one that was shorted. Now here is R317. And R317 did not look very good. Um, it looked kind of... It didn't look very good. You can see how on the bottom here it's uh, flaking off. The coating is flaking off. So I tested R317 because R317 not only did it look bad, but it's tied to the same trace that was reading shorted. Uh, well, 100 ohms. I read across, this is, this trace here, I, I just went to the capacitor and tested everything that's on the circuit for both of these. Since this is, since this was bubbling and bulging, I tested everything on the circuit. And when you read across R317, I read like 7 mega ohm. So I took the resistor out, and sure enough, the resistor was open, completely open. So we had IC301 was shorted, and it was causing C310 to blow its top and also combined with an open R317. I don't know if this took out, if this opened up and took out IC301 or vice versa. I don't know, but the cap, the cap isn't a cause, the cap is a, uh, an effect. So I don't know if the IC301 was the cause or R317 was the cause, I don't know. But regardless, I, I replaced the capacitor, replaced R317 and replaced IC301 and uh, we're ready to test now. <clears throat> I couldn't find anything else wrong with it. Everything else on that circuit tested okay. So I am fairly confident that that will solve the problem. Because there's nothing else I can think of. Um, I've had... This is the exact same chip that's in the 92-9400. Uh, there's, there's a giant heat sink sitting right here. And this is attached to that heat sink. And this is part of the 15 volt circuit for vertical deflection. So I, I'm not surprised that we had no image and things like that with this faulty one installed. On the 9800, it's over here on the heat sink, on this heat sink. But on the 929400, it's attached to a heat sink that's right here, uh, right there. So <clears throat> it's the exact same chip. So I actually had some of those on hand for my previous repair attempts on 929400. So yeah, I've, I've replaced other stuff here that didn't do anything. But now that I've discovered this bad IC301 and this open resistor, um, I think we'll be good to go. Now I had to replace that R317. It's supposed to be a 6.8 ohm resistor and I didn't have any that were 2 watts but I had one here that I don't know if this is 1 watt. I think this might be... no, that's the other way around. It goes higher. This might be 4 watt. I don't know what wattage this is offhand. That's why this is the amateur channel. But this it turns out that the B plus resistor on the uh, Wells Gardner, the 7400 and the 7500 U2000 U5000, that series of chassis, the B-plus resistor, just happens to be 
6.8 ohms. So I was able to snag one of those from a donor chassis and and uh, and get that to work. Uh, so I think we are actually ready to test. I went through and verified the previous or the owner's previous work here. Everything looked okay. Did a fairly decent job on uh, the install. And let me go ahead and get some of this cleaned up here while I have it because I don't want to take it back out again after I after we tested it if it works I don't want to have to take it back out again to clean it so we're gonna clean it real quick while we have it out okay let's just clean this together here uh, here we go on this side Fools! They think they can kill the brother of Badula! Yama, 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 yama! Alright. So, I think that just about wraps it up. Um, it's time to get this tested see what we get. Before we do that, let me show you, do a little quick show and tell here. Uh, here's our original R317, and we'll get our meter here, and uh, I'm, I got new leads on the way from Amazon because my leads decided to, uh, the wire broke, so I had to shove it in there and kind of zip tie it. So it does work though, if I touch the leads together, you can see, uh, well, this should be much closer to zero there. There you go, 0 0.4. Now if I touch our resistor here that was originally installed, we get nothing! O-P-E-N. And that was the original R317 that uh, I replaced with that 6.8 ohm resistor out of the that B plus resistor, right? This one right there. Uh, and then if we take pins 2 and 6, let me get an idea of orientation here. Uh, it is the outer two of the three. So if we go to pins 3 and 6 here which are the outer two pins on the three and touch those together. There you go, look at that, 4.2 ohms, internal short. Now if we grab a brand new one, uh, see I've got a, when I was troubleshooting a D9200 a number of years ago that had a partial vertical collapse, I, I ordered a bunch of these, I mean I, a lot, I've got a lot of them. I ordered a bunch, so I have a little bag here of parts uh, for the D9200, 9400. So I actually had a bunch of these on hand, but if we test the same pins on here, we see we get 4.3 ohms. If we go to the same two pins on this one, we get, there you go, 30 mega ohm. So we absolutely had a bad short at IC301. Boom. Uh, and an open resistor, 317. Changed out the capacitor one last time. And let's test it, see what we get. Fingers crossed, I'm fairly confident. So I'll get this back on the, the uh, chassis, or on the tube I should say, and we'll see what happens. Wish me luck. All right, so here it is all back together, back on the tube, everything hooked up, anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, remote, and uh, yeah, so it's ready to test. I'm fairly confident, I have not turned it on yet, so we'll find out together. I have the test pattern generator at the ready. Since this is going to be a medium res game, it's going to be going in a medium res machine. Uh, we're going to test medium res first, then we can switch it over to standard. And I think I, I have a way to test VGA, but I'm not set up for it. Uh, in thoroughness, I should probably set up for VGA. So let's make sure it actually works. And if it does, then we'll cut away. I'll set up for VGA and we'll test VGA later. But for now, we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and turn it on. This is off. I want to leave that off for now. Let's turn it on, make sure it actually fires up and doesn't give me any kind of issues. So here we go. One, two, three. Okay, uh, we had high voltage. Hey, look at that. There we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Perfect. So we're set to medium resolution. Let's turn this on, see what we get. Yes. Hey, and it's even, uh, I'm not surprised it's set for medium res. It's a medium res game. It's actually already centered. 
Wow. Huh. Okay. Well, let's go through. We've got perfect color bars. Wow. Uh, skip a little bit too fast there. I'm going too fast for the... There we go. I'm going too fast for the <laughs> digital part of it. Look at that. Outstanding. So we had a bad IC301 that took out uh, an R317, I think it was, or some combination thereof. Could have been vice versa, but I'm pretty sure this thing got zapped somehow or died. Took out 317, and that cooked our capacitor. I forget what capacitor this was. Uh, and then I didn't know that these components were bad. I put this one in, and it kind of cooked this one as well. Not as I didn't leave it on as long as I did when this one was running. Uh, well, I think this was already done prior before I got the, the chassis, but so the fact that this this replacement cooked as well led me to uh, Look a bit closer in that circuit and like I showed you this stuff was tied right to it. So that was it a bad IC 301 and an open R317 and Replaced the capacitor and it's back to working So yeah, I'll let it run as a matter of fact, let's turn this off Set it back to standard and we get our no signal in again Turn it back on. Let's see what our standard res looks like. Oh, we got some pin cushion action happening here. And yeah, you can see over here how it's pin cushion, but and even kind of slightly here. And that's not unheard of because of the different resolutions between standard and, and uh, medium. It's also shifted over a bit where medium was perfect. And this is all shifted over. Not uncommon. It's that same way with every, every, uh, dual res or tri res because of the way the test pattern generator is set up so we have working standard working medium um you know i think uh, give me a moment here give me one moment uh set this here set you guys right there okay let's hook up uh vga cable oh, i don't want to move hang on I'm gonna turn this off. I don't have the chassis secured in the frame here. I don't want to burn anything up, so we're gonna just gently connect our VGA. Let's screw this side in. There we go. And then I've got a bunch of 60 and one boards up here. And I'm gonna have to see how I can slap this in here. These are the old, well, actually, this is a 19 and 1, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 1, okay, 9 and 1, so we're hooked up for there, let's get our VGA cable, as a matter of fact, let's turn this off, and let's make sure that our VGA works properly, okay, all right, let's see what that does, here we go, 1, 2, 3, and we're sitting back secure. Okay, good. One, two, three. Here we go. Okay, it came to life. And we have working VGA. How about that? Uh, there we go. Well, looks like crap, but needs to be adjusted. Everything, every, like I say, CGA, EGA, VGA are all different position, colors, size, all that stuff. So, but we're working. We have a successful repair. Oh yes, we do. All right. Well, there you go, ladies and germs. Uh, I don't, like I say, I don't normally offer services on these because of how notoriously difficult the 92, 94, 98 are to repair and troubleshoot. But yeah, I'm going to let this run for a little bit. And like I always do, I'll leave it on a medium res. I'll actually throw in, I got a cruising USA board I'll throw in and let it run off that so I don't run my battery down on the generator. But a successful repair. Um, two bad components is all it was. Like I say, I wish I had a way to show you what it was prior, but I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get this fixed, so I didn't really do anything. I didn't plan on making the video. I didn't expect to be able to fix it, but since I did, I wanted to talk about it. The uh, The whole screen was just white, 
like I said before, the whole screen was white, and this corner here and this corner here were severely gouged and discolored, and and the screen would jitter around and go from bright to dark and bright to dark and phase in and out. And as soon as you hooked up a video signal, no matter what video signal it was, it would just it would click and click off. And as soon as you unplugged the video signal, it would click back on, and it was just pretty bad. That's when I noticed this cap was bulging, and uh, kind of went from there. So. Yeah, all of the issues are now resolved. It's working great for all three inputs, so hopefully you learned something. Uh, like I say, I don't offer services on these. This was just something that was brought to me, so uh, in hopes that I could fix it because they were local. So uh, hopefully you can use this uh, to help you out in the future if you have a similar problem. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.